Wow, I am going to show you 10 items that sold for over $100 in my eBay store for the month of March 2021. It was my best month on eBay. So let's head into it with the number 10 item, or I should say grouping of items. I took a best offer on these for $110. It is all related to the USS Little Rock, which is a guided uh, light missile cruiser uh, for the US Navy. Uh, you could see here that we've got a combination of a supply hat, we have a fleet book, and we have a newspaper article that I found tucked inside which talks about that cruiser. Now, in addition to the historical interest that this combination of items would bring, you can also see on the inside that it says E.D. Bullard. I have that in the title for a reason because there are a group of collectors out there that specifically look for that brand name on helmets. So when you have the combination of that brand name plus the historical interest, you could see here inside, uh, sort of has the style of a yearbook showing all sorts of things about the fleet. Uh, it's really a great combo uh, of items to find. And you can imagine, you know, military collectors would love this. And if there are any family members uh, or members of the fleet looking for stuff related to this cruiser, they would definitely be interested in it. Now, where do you find something like this set of items? I'm going to take you back to an older video where I found these. This was a video called Picking a Hoarder's House, Finding the Treasures in an Overwhelming Mess. Some of you who are old school on the channel uh, may remember this, but as I walked into the room, this is why I always say, look inside the boxes. There you could see the CLG4 hat. There's that label inside for E.D. Bullard. But what I was also saying in, in other videos is that look for combinations of things. Look for things that have something similar. So in that box, we have the helmet that says CLG4 on it. Let's see if I show it again here there we go that was that that hat that hat had a five dollar price tag on it that's it um then i don't know if i show it again the co there it is clg4 okay so keep that in your mind when you're looking around because then later on in the video i'm going through a box of of books <clears throat> and as you can see here again digging through the books keep digging keep digging and look what i find what's that say USS Little Rock CLG4. So now I say, wow, this is great. I could combine these two items together. They just wound up getting scattered in the house. And then when I opened it up, I found the newspaper article inside there. I don't know if I showed it right here, but it was in it was in there somewhere. So um, that's how those uh, items were found. That's how I, there it is. There's the newspaper article right there. So, you know, and that's ultimately how it wound up getting displayed. So look for those types of things that sales could really help you out a lot. Now, this is something that I found uh, in a garage sale. It's a bunch of fragrance oils. And you could see how I, how I display them, try to get everything in that first shot right there. And then I took individual close-ups of ones that had a similar grouping. Like these were all the Aztec ones and then these all had this kind of look to it. These were vintage. They had some really cool um, scents uh, like hippie chick, and <laughs> lavender apples, and little black dress. I mean, there were all sorts of ones. There, there were some amazing ones out here. I'm trying to remember all of them. They were so funny. Uh, boy, there, there were, uh, may, look at that, maybe baby. I mean, there are some good ones on there. Anyway, uh, 93 total. I did give a few to Mrs. Primetime. She demanded that she could have some. So I gave her like 10 of the perfumes. I wound up selling them for $175. They do require special shipping techniques, uh, similar to what I've talked about before in a prior video about uh, shipping off aerosol sprays. These have to go ground because they are flammable. So you have to be careful with this and properly label the outside. Uh, this is the garage sale where I found the fragrances in. There was nothing else. This was towards the beginning of COVID. You could see there, look at that. Fragrance, oils, candles, lotions, soaps, $5 box lot for everything. And where is it located, by the way? It's on the floor. It's on the ground. 
And another thing, if you look at that top down view, right, what are you seeing there? You're seeing the tops of, of bottles. That's all you're seeing. You're not seeing what's in there. So a lot of things there led to that being overlooked. One, it's on the floor. People are not usually looking down. They're looking straight ahead with tunnel vision. Number two, if they do look down, you know, they can't really get a full sense of what's there because of how they have it positioned. So it's not really displayed well. But that, again, goes to the whole theme of really doing treasure hunting and digging and exploring and taking things out and bending down. All of those things help lead to these bigger profit types of sales that I'm showing in this video. So that's number nine. Let's head over to number eight. This is actually a private deal that I made with someone. When I say private deal, when it says private sale up top, what happened was somebody wrote me on eBay and said, hey, listen, I see you have all these different Halloween die cuts. And I had them listed in multiples. Like, you know, you could see here, there's multiples of the ghost. There's multiples of the purple owl. And a person said, uh, how much <clears throat> for all of them? I want to buy them all, all that you have left. So I said, all right, well, let me just count it out. I counted them out, saw what I had them priced for, came up what, you know, what a total price would have been, and then just gave the person a discount and, uh, you know, sold it for the price you see there, $179. This is not a special setting in eBay for a private sale. I just say that I put it up there and then I literally say in the listing that if anyone else buys it, I'll cancel it. But I tell the person who's buying it from me, be ready. I make sure they're ready right then and there. I'm going to send you the link, buy it, you know, ASAP. And that's, that's what happened here. So this was great because, um, I had already sold a ton of them. You may remember me finding a lot of these in the uh, Halloween sale. Like all of them were paid for with just those first few vintage Dracula uh, ones that I found. And then there was a Frankenstein one as well. And then I just wound up buying all of them. And here and there, some of the other ones would sell for uh, 10 to $15, sometimes a little bit more. There you could see the ghost one right there. Um, you know, but, uh, so at that point, you know, when I, the remaining ones that I had left again, all profit ones, I was happy to just combine them and make a custom deal. It just, you know, especially since we have a while for a Halloween when it's off season, they still sell, but it'll be a slower seller. So I was glad to just get, get rid of them all and, you know, take in that 179 uh, price minus fees and, and shipping. Uh, so this is the next one. I did a separate video on this. You might remember it. It's the lot of 500 uh, vintage slides from the 1940s. These are the red uh, Kodachrome transparency slides. Uh, definitely make sure if you see these, you pick them up and take a look at, at them. Uh, you could see over here, I was showing how I was just putting them up in front of the light uh, in front of the uh, computer. Uh, just on a white background, uh, like on a Google screen, something white. And I was just taking photos of what the actual uh, slides were, what they look like, and just highlighting some of the best uh, ones, some of the coolest ones that I thought people might want to develop, display, and maybe even you know develop and sell, depending on who it was. If I love this picture, <laughs> this guy's the best. He's awesome. I want to be this guy when I'm like 80 years old. I want to be this guy. <laughs> this guy is awesome. I should, I should put up some pictures of my grandfather at some point and show you. He was he, pictures. Look, he looked just like this. It's hilarious. So that's pretty funny. Anyway, uh, there have been Don, the auction professor, go check out Don's channel, by the way, he was recently talking about that um, depending on the slide you find, uh, you could sell some of these individual slides. Sometimes an individual Kodachrome, red Kodachrome slide could, could sell for, uh, he sold one for $600. So that's how crazy it could be depending on what you find. So always check out the red uh, Kodachromes. I got them for like five to $10 in an estate sale or just sitting there. I remember where it was just sitting there right on top of a um, right on top of a table somewhere, just scoop them up, got them. Okay. Now next one, this is very interesting. Uh, this one here, these are two, um, color guides that they're of red Sonia. And if you're not familiar with red Sonia, she is a redheaded comic book, uh, warrior character, uh, first appeared in Conan number 23. You could see her right here, Conan, the barbarian. Uh, and then she had her own series as well. And eventually she was drawn by uh, Frank Thorne. Now, 
at the time that I purchased these, Frank Thorne was still alive, but he was getting up there in age. Now he signed these. Uh, you could see right over here. That's his signature. Now I know it doesn't look because it's it's printed, but that's actually how he would sign his name, F Thorne, like that, right on the side. Here, let me get you another close up of it. Okay, so here's what happened. I I bought these for a third of the price, and I tripled the price of them, put them up. You could do that with art. And I had them sitting there since November. Well, what happened on the day these sold? These sold on March 7th, 2021. What happened on that day? Frank Thorne, he passed away. The artist who mostly was responsible for drawing Red Sonia. And what happens when you have events in the news like this that occur, especially when someone passes away, people get very nostalgic. They go on eBay, they start doing searches, and they will pay up for something like this. Even though it had a tear on the bottom that I did not know about when I purchased it because it was kind of camouflaged from the auction site. I got a little bit of money off of it actually as a refund. But this just goes to show that some of these things will still sell even if they have a tears like this. Now, speaking of Red Sonia, I want to give a shout out to my friend, a uh, fellow a YouTuber, a, a Gem Mint. His daughter, Jade, is producing an exclusive uh, comic book cover for uh, Red Sonia. And I, and I really want to support her. I just purchased one of the comic books myself uh, for $20 plus $5 shipping. I am not getting, he doesn't even know I'm doing this, Gem Mint. I'll, I'll tell him later, but uh, I'm, so I'm not getting any money off of this. I just telling you this because I, if you like comic books and you like art, uh, I would really love if you went over and, and supported uh, him and his daughter. I love supporting new artists and um, there's all different, you know, uh, covers that are available, but just goes to show the popularity of this, um, character continues. And if you do go over, let Jem Min know you came from this channel. Let me know also uh, in the comment section because uh, I, I think she's very, very talented. So uh, let's go over to the next one right here. Uh, oh, by the way, if I didn't say it, I'll put a link in the description section to this uh, page where you could uh, go check this out. Uh, anyway, all right. So the next one, this is the um, Sizzlers set, the National Champ race set. I got this at an estate sale. Some of you might remember this. I'm trying to remember how much I paid for it. It was somewhere between like twenty and forty dollars. I, I believe I got it the second day at a discount. It was still just sitting around, probably because it was so big. Uh, it had most of the pieces inside, but it was not complete. But having the original box really, really helped out. Also, I always tell people to make sure you're looking for anything that's vintage Mattel. I don't care what it is chances are that you're going to get a good price on it if it's a vintage piece. So uh, this is my overhead display. You could see from my, my first picture, I am trying as much as possible to show every single thing in the item, this time with this overhead view, so people could see both the box and all of the pieces. And then I just do zoom ups of you know, individual things after that. So people could get a sense and see the box has wear box has damage, but people expect that the fact that it still has most of the colors on it and it displays well, you see, that's what a collector would love to have and display in like a man cave or something. Plus they would like some of the parts as well. Um, that's what helped this sell for the price. You see $200 from 1969. Okay. Next one over here. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 361. If you ever see this, pick it up because especially if you get it for a good price. Uh this one sold for the price that you see. Uh oh no, sorry. I actually took a little bit off. $225. $225. Amazing Spider-Man 361 is in very fine to near mint uh condition. Uh this is the uh part one of the Carnage uh story here. So uh, it, it is one where it, you got to be careful of the background because you see here, it has a white background over here. Well, um, there are other printings that have different color backgrounds, like a purple background. So you got to be careful <clears throat> because it's not like it says on their second printing. So you got to know what the color combinations are, but if it's white, that's going to be your, your, your first printing up the second printing it'll still sell. Uh, I actually did sell a second printing for a hundred dollars last month as well. But with these, I like to take a picture of the first, uh, you know, of the overhead for the 
for the cover, obviously, make sure you're taking a picture of the sides. Another thing I tell people who are taking pictures of comic books, please don't cut the corners off. Make sure you're showing the buyer every single aspect of the book. Leave a healthy boundary around it so they could see it and then take some pictures inside uh, of it like this. So just, um, you know, and then if there's other Venoms in here as well, so you see the black character. So I made sure that I mentioned that and, and sh you know, showed a picture of that. These are things that people are going to search for. So, you know, as many key terms as you could have in your title, that's going to help you out a lot. And of course, you want to make sure you're taking a picture of the back cover as well, because that's going to factor uh, into the grading. So now we're going to go over to the next item. I think we have three more to go here. So uh, this one I just did a video about, so many of you are aware of it. So I'm not going to go over it in much detail, but uh, I did sell these for $250. I got them recently at a vintage sale. The key thing is the term TRS-80. Uh, that is the uh, name for the old uh, desktop home computer system that came out in 19... Uh, 77 stands for uh, Tandy Radio Shack. So, and the, the 80 is for the uh, Z80 micro uh, processor. So uh, the other thing that was really key for this sale was the vintage Microsoft binders on the bottom, which when you open it up inside, you could see they're also related to the TRS-80. So uh, very, very um, hard to find type of item. Those types of vintage binders from 1978 and 1979 when Microsoft came out in 75, I got these for $6, turned it into a $250 flip. I'll put a link to the video where I discussed this in more detail up top if you missed it so you could see more about it there. Uh, and then I just did a video about these. I'll put a link to that video up top as well if you missed it. But these are the Dr. Seuss books that I picked up for a dollar a piece at the same sale where I got these items. So that was a very good uh, day for me and uh, took a best offer, sold these for $400. None of these are the discontinued slash banned books, um, but that was one of the points I was trying to make in the video. If you remember, these will still sell because there's carry over value. It's funny, I was just talking to my mom, Mama Primetime on the phone this morning and I told her about the sale. And the funny thing is she's not a reseller or anything, but she said to me, you know why? She goes, because everyone's worried about what the next book is that's gonna be discontinued or banned. I said, exactly right. I said, that's what I said in the video. So, um, you know, that just goes to show you that's exactly how people think and why they pay up for this type of stuff. So uh, that brings me to the last sale of the month. And this is a big one. Of course, it's comic book related. This is amazing. Spider-Man number 238. Uh, first appearance of the Hobgoblin, which makes it a, you know very important. But it's not just that that drives up the price. Now, this was a $700 sale for a raw comic book. Okay. Now, if you look up top there, you can see it's, it's, it, there's, it, it is 238. Now it also says on the side is from 1983. So it's not that old. There is a possibility you could come across it, but what you really want to pay attention to with this particular comic book, look on the bottom, right? You could see there, it says bonus feature, free lakeside skin tattoos inside. Now, a lot of people pulled out the skin tattoos packet that was inside of this. So it's hard to find them with the tattoos. But as you can see right here, this white piece of paper, this is the beginning uh, part that connects to the tattoos, which are going to be in the back of the book. So I'll show you right over uh, here. This right here inside this little packet is where the tattoos are and you can't even really see them well you can't even really feel them well but they're in there as long as that thing is sealed and intact they're inside of there uh so that's what you're looking for and if you have that if you have that those tattoos this is the other side of the card right there see it says samples inside that is going to make the price of that book skyrocket so there you can see uh this is another reason why i'm so into comic books i got this just um, oh, I actually, I actually invested in this. Actually, uh, this is something I purchased many years ago for around sixty bucks at the time, and just held on to it. And you could see what's happening with the price. That's why comic books really are a great investment, and you know you can use them for that purpose. 
and uh, really make some great sales. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Share this video with someone else and check out the join button for all the perks of membership, including all the fun, cool emojis and uh, access to the videos an hour early. I'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care.